Okay, in this video, I just want to show off the new list, uh, what we're calling UCS version 8.1. This is a small update to the category system. And um, when we first designed this list, well, a little more than a year ago or a year and a few months ago, you know, our goal was to try to create a list that didn't need much updating. We spent a lot of time trying to figure out pretty much a home for everything. But over time, we realized that there were some improvements that could be made, some categories that people pointed out to us that would be really beneficial, some things that we either just really kind of missed and we probably should have had there. So the 8.1 update to UCS adds 25 new subcategories. So no new categories. The top level 82 categories stay exactly the same. There are now 685 total category subcategory pairs, 25 new ones. And if you look at the new list, you'll see that they're marked in green. And I just thought I'd go through them really quick in this video and explain why we're adding them and, you know, possibly what they're, if not replacing, sort of supplementing. By the time you see this video online, this list will be up on our normal sort of homepage, the Google Drive homepage. And you can start at universalcategorysystem.com and see a link to this. And also by this time, it will be included in the built-in list in SoundMiner. And I will try to send it out to Soundly and Basehead and anybody else so that hopefully by the time we make this live, it will be available in their apps as well, anybody who's using this list. So I'll try to get the word out before. But let's just scroll down through the list and see what's new. So we've added some new um, interior, basically, um, subcategories for certain things. Aircraft, we'll see when we get down further, boats, vehicles, trains. And the idea here is that um, these would be ambiences or sort of composite recordings of an interior location of a vehicle. You know, in the case of aircraft interior, it would be you're a passenger, you're flying across the country, and you're recording some ambience in the passenger compartment of an aircraft. Or you somehow convince somebody to put a microphone in the cockpit of a helicopter or something like that. Now, before, you would probably just put this under helicopter or aircraft jet, things like that. But we thought that an interior sort of um, thing like this made the most sense. And we'll talk a little more about it as we scroll down. Probably the category that received the biggest number of updates is ambience. And we just realized that there are certain things that would be beneficial. And some of these came from the nature community and some just from the larger sound community. And one that people really wanted was something we we're going to call ambience air. I think of this as like the exterior version of room tones, right? Sometimes you have these recordings that are just really, really quiet exterior air. It's not even wind. You wouldn't really want to call it wind. Um, there's almost no activity, so it's not a rural recording, it's not an urban recording, it's just basically air. And that's what this category is meant to be. Then we have some um, new nature sort of inspired categories. We have alpine, we have grassland here. If we scroll down, we'll also see we have tundra. And these were specifically requested by some nature recordists who had recordings that they really felt needed to go in, in um, categories such as these. So alpine is mountainous environments, right? Now, it could be a wind recording could be other things, but something that's, you know, geographically in an alpine environment. Grassland is for meadows and prairies and things like that. Not really a farm. Farm would sort of imply a human aspect to it or, you know, livestock and fowl and things like that, domesticated animals. Grassland is more sort of wild prairies and things like that. Lakeside is sort of the accompanying um, to go with seaside. It's sort of not just the water lapping, but it would be a composite recording or a, an ambience that had, you know, various aspects, you know, near a lake. Park is something that before we probably would have put in uh, Ambien's public place, but park, dis we decided it really needed its own um, subcategory. There are plenty of recordings in parks where you might have people playing and things like that. And it's, you know, not really an urban recording. It's not really a suburban recording. It's sort of somewhere in between. So park gets its own category. Now, protest is basically the counterpart to Ambien's celebration. This would be places for like riots, demonstrations, protests things of that nature, things that aren't celebratory as much, um, you know, leaning towards maybe more angry crowds or things like that, chanting, rallies, things like that. They'll go here under ambience protest. Now, town is an important one because this one has been, you know, from the very beginning of the list, a little controversial because we had ambience urban, which was sort of like city, think New York City. And we had ambience suburban, which of course is your, you know, lawn mowers and sprinklers and things like that. But there wasn't really any great place to store something sort of in between. You think of a small village or a small town or something like that. It's not really urban. It's not really suburban. Um, we struggled with the name a little bit, but we decided town was the best sort of uh, word for it. And so that's what we have here, Ambience Town. So these are things, something in between a city and a suburb, basically. A village, um, a small town, something like that. So, you know, there may be cars, there may be people, but it's not you know, sirens, and it's not uh, downtown Los Angeles, and it's clearly not a uh, suburban. 
Tundra, again, is uh, at the, na- the request of the nature community. These are basically treeless environments, permanently frozen ground, so the Arctic, the Antarctic, places like that. Now, one addition to the archived category, and we're going to call this asset. And an asset is basically something used in the process of creating a project. So something you need to track in a video game community, which is really what this is probably most useful for. You know, you might have 37 um, delivered sounds for a particular event within a game, and they might be triggered within the game and things like that. Instead of just calling them in the categories, they are, you know, these are delivered assets for a game, so you want to be able to track those. So asset is basically a new tag that could be used for that. And if we keep scrolling down, we see that here's the interior boats category. Again, this would be something like you're a passenger on a cruise ship or a ferry, something like that. You know, um, some overlap for sure with boats ship. But the idea here is that, you know, particularly this is an interior sort of recording where there's a bunch of things happening. It's not just the sound of a ship engine or something like that. You know, it's fine to put those things under boats ship as well. But now you have an interior category as an option as well. We scroll down. I want to point out that creatures was the only category that had a source subcategory. And the idea with that was recordings that you're going to use later on for doing more creature design, you know, could go into the source. It's sort of like a raw recording, but, you know, a way to track those. Well, we're going to add basically a source category here for designed as well. And we're going to add one more down the list. But you see, this is, again, a place for you to store recordings that were really, you recorded with the intention of then using them to design other sounds with, and you might want to track them as, you know, sort of these raw recordings for a particular purpose. The other two additions to designed are distortion and vocal. So distortion is any element that's particularly distorted or designed that's made to sound very distorted, something like that. This might be used in, you know, scene transitions or uh, I'm not sure exactly what, but, you know, people ask for a, a way to track distorted sounds. And so here we go. Design vocal is one that I actually added, and what happens is all the time I'm, I'm on a project where I'm asked to basically process a lot of vocals, um, maybe create some really some whispers. Now, there'll be some overlap here with design ethereal for sure, but this is particularly processing vocal elements um, is what I'm thinking of it for. So, you know, I might have to process a bunch of people into robots or process a bunch of people into sound more creature-ish or... Um, create some spells but that have a very very vocal aspect you know there's words that are understandable and things like that so designed vocal is a place i could start to keep track of those now doors creek was simply a mistake i will admit this openly we should have had it in from the beginning we at the time we rationalized that um you know uh, a door creek could be a metal creek or a wood creek and those should go under the friction categories and all these things but the simple truth is People expect to see a doors a creek category, and it's finally here. So things that are overtly door creeks can go here. We keep scrolling down. It's not too many left. Um, gore is the other one that's now going to get a source category. So people are recording, um, you know, punching meat or breaking celery sticks and things like that with the intention of creating gore, breaking bones and things like that. The source recordings could go under gore source if they wanted. There are other places they could potentially go to. But that's what this is intended for. So again, dis- designed and gore both get these source subcategories as well because we think they'll be useful. Now, guns handle is another one that probably should have been there from the beginning. Um, you know, it's sort of a foliage type category, but you know, there's so many recordings of guns being picked up and handled and put in a holster and potentially even dropped and things like that. Gun rattles, which of course, um, you know, didn't really have an easy home earlier. So. You know, I, I put in here, this is alongside gun mechanism, but it's, you know, gun handling, grabs, dropping, catching, things like that. And um, I think this one should have been in there from the beginning, but now it's there. And if I keep scrolling down. Now we added two more to objects here. We've added basically book and container. Um, you know, books, just books, magazines, things like that. There's enough recordings of these things that it just felt like we probably needed that as its own subcategory. And container is just, you know, boxes, jewelry boxes, Tupperware, you know, anything that's, you know, used to store other things. It comes up enough that we thought it was an additional thing. You know, it could could have fell under household before, but it seemed like a good addition, so we've added it. Now, paper gets three new, basically, subcategories. When we did paper, we treated it a little bit different than things like wood and metal. We Maybe we shouldn't have, but um, we overlooked the fact that, of course, you could have paper impacts, somebody hitting somebody with a magazine or a newspaper, right? paper friction, sliding paper, things like that. And again, cardboard would probably fall under paper for all practical purposes. We don't have a separate cardboard category. So things like sliding on cardboard um, certainly exist. And 
although we didn't think about at the time where we thought no, that we didn't make much sense, you know, people have come to us and said, actually, there are things you can do with paper that are very tonal. And they requested that be put in to match sort of the metal tonal and things like that category. So we now have paper tonal as well. I think this is going to be a pretty rare one to see. But there are some people that have some libraries that they really thought would the best fit would be paper tonal. And if I scroll down, we've added one new sci-fi subcategory, and this is sci-fi mechanism. Now we have mechanical mechanism, or I guess it's machine mechanism if I scroll back up here. Um, yeah, machine mechanism is a, you know, a very gear-like type uh, complex thing, a puzzle box or something like that. Well, we thought there might be the equivalent of it in the sci-fi category. So something similar, but you know, with a much more science fiction-y type of sound, more electronic and more you know, sci-fi, for better, lack of a better word. So that is a new subcategory there as well. And trains interior basically also gets the same interior category as boats and aircraft. So again, you know, if you're riding in a passenger train, you're riding in a high-speed train, something like that, that's a train interior. And vehicles interior gets the same thing. Now, for something like vehicles interior, if you were doing a full workup on a car and you were recording the engine from exterior and you were recording it from interior, you might want to keep all of that just in vehicles car, to be honest. But Let's say you just have a recording of riding around in your friend's car. You don't have a full workup. You don't have any other files to go with it. Then maybe vehicles interior would be a good place to do that. Or riding in a bus, for example. Um, or you had a microphone that's in the back of a moving truck, for example, which we've done before. You know, something like that. Didn't really have a great home before. Again, I would argue if you're doing a full workup on a vehicle, you might want to keep all those files together in the, in the category that matched it. So vehicles, truck, or bus, or something like that. But if you just have that single recording, of an interior maybe this is a good place to put it and i think that's it so that's it there's the 25 new sort of subcategories in this list um we've added them into all the translations most of those are all done these will be the sort of part of this new 8.1 list after this we probably aren't going to update this list for a very long time again for i would imagine a year or a couple years maybe even if we ever even add any more updates this might just be it um i didn't really want to call it nine because it's not a huge update again there's no new categories it's just these 25 new subcategories so that's it that's ucs 8.1 and that's just a little explanation of what's new